let's turn this right here, these pieces of wood, into the most beautiful table runner you've ever made in under 30 minutes. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Project Home DIY. My name is Christine Glo, the owner, curator, and designer of your Project Home projects. Thank you for joining us this month. If you're brand new with us, make sure you get out that starter kit and use the supplies that we brought to you to be able to complete these projects. So you're gonna need a paintbrush. We did supply a new product in our boxes. It's the gel stain from <clears throat> Deco Art. You'll find that these are super easy to use. They dry quick. I think we're gonna love them. And you'll need whatever paints, other paints or um, mediums you decide to cover like your hello word in and get all that stuff ready. So let's get started with our June project. And how versatile is it? It's gonna be unbelievable. I'm not making the wreath, but I'm gonna make the main project, which would be the long table runner and make that part of it, but then I'll also go over the wreath so you can decide which way you wanna do this project. So come on around, let's get started. Okay, so down here, nice and close. First things first is we're gonna to put together the table runner. So the way we'll do the hello later when the table runner is drying, um, but these pieces of wood are not even on both ends. You can see this is skinnier and this is thicker. So we're gonna flip flop those one direction to the other when laying out our table runner. This essentially is going to be our back side. So if there's anything that you don't like um, showing on the wood that you don't want on the front side, put it up, face up right now because this is our back side that we're working on. So lay all these out. Okay, I have everything laid out right now. I don't mind how there's a little bit of uneven here, but if you do not like that, just take one of the pieces of wood and kind of bump them up so they are more even. So I don't mind it, but if you don't like that look, then change that. We're gonna take this foam tape and it's super extremely sticky on one side and they'll be soft and foamy on the other side so it won't ever scratch your tables or anything that you put this on. So measure out two strips. Just a tiny bit left, so that should work out just perfectly. If you don't want such a long table runner, you don't have to do this whole thing. You can measure your space and see what works best. I'm going to flip over this felt strip and just start peeling back some of it and just sticking it on each piece, running it straight down. Kind of keeping your pieces of wood together. Press those down. Okay, second piece.
Okay, those pieces are all put together. Now I'm just gonna move this up here just a little bit while I get out paper, which in your box, there is usually packing paper, which is super handy to put out on your tables to keep your surfaces clean when you're painting or staining. So I'm gonna take our wood table runner here. And I wanna flip it over. So all those stayed together just fine. No issues, move it down a little bit more if you need to. Okay, it's a little short. Just one more piece of paper. The way that I'm gonna finish this is um, with using uh, the gel stain that was provided. So it's walnut. I'm gonna put walnut gel stain all down on the whole thing first and then let it dry and then top coat it with um, white, just a white paint or a ivory off-white paint. And then I'm gonna sand off spaces so this stained color will show through. It's kind of just my favorite antiquing method. Um, it's pretty simple. The nice thing about the gel stains versus a oil-based Minwax paint is if I was to oil-based uh, stain this right now, I would have to wait for, sorry, my doorbell. <laughs> I would have to wait for that stain to set up at least a day before I could do the top coat. So these gel stains, we don't have to wait like that, which is awesome. So there's really no prepping of the surface that you need to do. If though, you like to have different colors of each piece, in the tutorial section for the wreath, I did show how to quickly paint or whitewash or color wash, whatever you wanna call it, those pieces. So if you do want different colors for each piece, which is super pretty, you can um, check out the wreath tutorial at the end of this and see how I did that real quickly. They're pretty easy to do. So I'm just gonna take a paintbrush. And again, since I'm going over this with white later, I'm not going to stress too much about getting this super, super covered and the coverage like in the center of the board because it'll be a lot and actually, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on my paint tray and water it down just a tiny bit. I find just using the gel stains, um, you can water them down. You don't have to necessarily use a, a rag. You, it's pretty, they're pretty um, forgiving kind of just painting them on. So that's about the coverage that I'm gonna do with the first coat of gel stain. First coat is on, so I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna move it up a little bit. So you're gonna pull this paper out a little. I'm gonna use this to help paint my hello word. So this is gonna be antiqued white. I just wanna do a simple color 
um, that will kind of contrast with my decor or contrast with this sign and just kind of pop. Um, so I'm gonna do our blue color, which is just a, a nice blue, same blue that's behind me on the wall, kind of our signature color. So my favorite way to paint these kind of signs or cut, wood cut out words is the stipple method. So top down, so just start going in with your paintbrush, top down. And you can do all the sides the same way, inside the O, it's kind of just the easiest way to cover everything. If you brush it like this, especially with a loaded brush, a freshly dipped brush, you're gonna have just drips all over. So it's best just to start stipple right away. One of the nice things about painting these kind of things is <clears throat> when you have the opened end grain ends, like all this cut wood right here, if you touch it and hold it on those, you're not gonna take paint off there like you would on the surface of wood. So you can hold it, move it around um, in all places so you can get in all the corners. And this is double-sided, or you will want to paint it both sides because you will see it from the back side, depending on where you place it. Um, but even on the back side of your wreath, it's gonna have to be finished as well because you can see it through the door. So if you hung your wreath on the door, you can see the back side through your glass. So just keep that in mind when finishing these kind of things to finish both sides sometimes because they won't be always hidden. Okay covered just like that you can once you are done stippling like lightly go over it with a dryer brush or with the same brush but just not fully brushed with paint so to clear that off um, okay just set this to the side and I can see this is still wet so we're gonna have to wait a minute and let that dry and come back to it Make sure this is all dry for when you um, put the white on it. You don't wanna get into some wet spots and it be, um, it, it'll smear your white. So we'll be back to put the final coat on the top. All right, my first base color of the gel stain is dry. So I'm just gonna take <clears throat> some white paint. This is just a ivory latex paint. I feel like I say this every time, but this might be your first video with us. So you may not know my recommendations or my preferences, but I use just a white basic house wall paint color or paint. Um, I, that's what I prefer. I feel like the coverage is good. The, um, I like flat, so I like the finish of it. So I feel like this just works best for how I like to finish things. So the way I'm gonna start this, um, I'm just gonna paint on the white. And this is my finish coat. So I do want to get the sides, these sides, and these sides, everything kind of painted in white. I am going for the rustic look. So I do, um, I will have lots of imperfections within my paint as well. It won't be like 100% perfect. Um, if you want more of a modern, clean look, then make sure that you um, paint solid. Don't do any sort of rustic finish whatsoever to anything that you finish. So I'm just gonna paint this on, keeping in mind to do all these edges and these sides.
<clears throat> okay, all finished with the second, or yeah, the second coat, I guess the white, the top coat. I have it completely covered. I am noticing some of the <clears throat> gel stain is coming through. I do see some darker brown spots, but ultimately that's kind of the finish that I'm going for and that I want. So <clears throat> our next step would be to let this dry really, really well because we're going to get our sanding block out and finish it. And so I wanna make sure that this whole surface is dry. If I start sanding too soon, it'll gum up my sanding block and we'll have a mess. So don't wanna do that, but I'm gonna let this dry and we'll get back to it when it's dry. Okay, I'm back and the white is all dry. So we're ready to sand and put on the final finish so we can get started with that. Make sure that when you sand, um, it's gonna get dusty, so I kept the papers down, just easier cleanup, but you may wanna sand outside <clears throat> if that's a better area to do that. There could possibly be some paint inside in between these. Um, they'll kinda snap apart, that's okay. So, I'm going to sand by just going like this on every piece. If you happen to have a um, power tool sander, whatever you wanna call it, um, that will make this process a little bit faster, but they can also sometimes be too much. Um, they could sand off too much. So be careful when using your power sander. Um, if you are looking to get a power sander, I love this DeWalt one. Um, it's battery operated. Of course, we have all the 20 volt DeWalt tools too. So it just um, switches out batteries. Oh, it's quite messy from some sand sanding before. But <clears throat> I'm gonna do a mix of both. I will sand with this as well as with that. So I'm gonna get sanding. Got it all sanded. I'm just wiping it off the excess sand. Um, if you're used to using a um, furniture finishing wax, you can wax this if you want to wax it. Um, it just kind of seals it a little bit. If by chance um, you're going to have like uh, cups, if this is going to be used and could potentially get wet. You might want to seal it with uh, some sort of varnish or polyurethane um, to keep it protected. But this is it and I love it. It looks awesome. Um, set that on it. Have a nice little long thing of flowers or some sort of floral would be beautiful. So it would be like the most perfect addition to your decor. I love it. Love how it turned out. Um, if you find you need to hot glue some pieces. This is sticking great. Um, I'm finding this is sufficient. It'll protect your tables. It won't come apart. I think um, the felt will, or the um, foam tape will do great. tricky to get started. So I want to cover just a couple things verbally with you. Um, I'm going to include pictures in the written directions, <clears throat> but I'll also share them verbally. So on your wreath, you're going to take, before you even start, take your entire stack of wood. 
You need, oh, I think 24 pieces. So you'll have some extra, I believe there's 30 pieces in each pack. Um, but in order to make a perfect circle, these have to be laid out in the same, at the same position, same spacing in between. Easy way to do that is take your wood pieces and a um, measuring tape and measure at two inches and make a mark and then make a mark all the way across all of those pieces. So right at two inches, mark all the way across. It does not have to be perfect, perfect, like, but pretty good. So there's two inches, <clears throat> the two inch mark. Flip it over and you're going to measure, here's your two inch mark from the same end, measure to six and a half inches. So right there, I'm using one of the pieces of wood as a straight edge. Marking at six and a half. And there's my marks. Okay, so to start out, your inside of the wreath, in here, all the two inch marks will line up. Outside here, the six inch marks. So the outside part, these are all gonna be outside pieces. These are gonna be inside. Before you do your wreath, before you start assembling it, paint it, finish it, have everything dried, ready to go there. Okay, you're good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I took just a regular latex paint, watered it down with <clears throat> water, and I'm brushing this on to create a whitewash look over the wood. Super easy, simple way to stain it. And the more imperfect this is, imperfect this is, um, the better it actually looks. So then I'm just gonna take them and go like this. Set them up on edge. I didn't even wash my brush between doing the white and this blue. See, there's the edges, flip them over, and do this side. I didn't even wash my brush between doing the white, and so it kind of left some of them white streaky, which is really pretty. <clears throat> Lay them back out. And then just do one quick once over so it smooths the paint back out, and then let those dry. To start, you line up your two inch pieces. So right here, you put your end of your next piece on the two inch mark, and now look on the back side. So I'm gonna flip this over, look on the back side, and I'm gonna put that six inch mark right at the edge of the bottom piece of wood. So right there, and the two inches right there, six inch, two inch. And then what I did is I lifted it up like this. I can show you with hot glue. If you choose to hot, if you keep this inside, in, indoors, you can probably get away with hot gluing the whole thing. There is also hot glue, wood glue sticks. You can get those, they can go in your hot glue gun. They're awesome. That would be what I would 100% recommend for this. Um, but if you don't have those, you can use regular hot glue, but I would suggest this being interior only. Don't put it on your front door. Hot glue melts, everything will fall off. Here in Wyoming, doesn't happen so much, but I hear it with our customers in the South. Um, they can't use hot glue on hot front doors because it will melt and fall apart. So line up your two inch, line up your six inch. It has to be pretty perfect, but don't fret. Like it, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect every single time. So two inch, six inch, it's right there. Lift up this piece, hot glue in the general area. Two inch and six inch. That's how we do it. So then you're gonna go turn it, put your next one on. Here's my six inch outer piece, my two inch inner piece meet, meeting up. So you can see all the three inch or two inch marks, your next one and 
meets up with it. And then your six inch one right there. So it's gonna get kind of heavy as you go. You'll have about seven or eight extra of these. Start setting them up underneath here. So it has something to support itself on, okay? If you don't, it could get kind of heavy and break on you. If you're using wood glue that needs time to dry, that's gonna take some time. So you're gonna have to stabilize it. Use wood glue and hot glue. The hot glue will immediately dry and the wood glue will um, secure it in the long run. Wood glue, like you can literally almost not even break anything once it's wood glued. I suggest Type On General. It's a blue and cream colored bottle. You can also, which I included on the instructions, a picture of <clears throat> a um, mirror, a sunburst mirror, which is super cute, but you can finish the wood first. You're gonna have to cut your pieces <clears throat> into two different lengths. So you'd cut them about here and here, and then you literally just line them up around a glass mirror, glue them on, and it looks so good, so good. So there's a lot of possibilities. I'm so excited to see what you guys do with these. There's so many different things you can do with these. If you turn this into, like take this, a framed piece of wood like this, and you could fill it with the herringbone pieces like that. So there's a lot of possibilities with these pieces. It's gonna be super fun to see what you guys come up with. Table runner wreath wall hanging. I picture this, I don't have the right nook area in my house, but like if you have a nice built-in nook, don't put the hello sign on it, but this is just like a backdrop thing, kind of hidden back there in the nook and then like a nice tall vase in front of it. It'd be so pretty and cute. So this is gonna be super fun to be able to see how you guys take this project and go the many, many different directions and possibilities. But that's one of the best things about Project Home is we can take the same pieces and make something so unique from a table runner to a wreath to a mirror. Come on, how much better does it get than that? We'll get um, all of everybody together in the VIP group. Make sure you join it if you are not part of it already. And you can post what you've created with these amazing pieces from Project Home. Can't wait to see what you've got created and let's get creative. See you later. <clears throat>